Welcome to What's Happening in Hanover, brought to you by the Town of Hanover, Hanover Chamber of Commerce, 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio, and Whiteman TV. Hi, this is Jen Olivero. And Adam Olivero, and welcome to April for What's Happening in Hanover. This month, we're talking with Blue Water Radio and their new morning show hosts... We'll be uh, heading down to the City Community Hall to talk about the Downtown Streetscape Revitalization Plan with the planners. And we're popping into the 2014 Chamber of Commerce Awards and talking with the award winners. But right now, we're in a really neat store in downtown uh, Hanover. Where is it? This is Fabulous Fashions, uh, and the owner is Sue Tipper, and she's busy working away in the background here. And we're going to talk with her about what you can find in this great consignment shop. Hi, it's Jen Olivero, and I'm here with Sue Tipper at Fabulous Fashions. Sue, tell me about your store. Well, it's a consignment boutique, so people bring in their clothing that they no longer wear or they bought, and it's brand new, and it doesn't fit them when they get it home. So I resell it for them, and the people, people can come in and check out something different. And you carry a wide variety as well. You will take shoes, purses, uh, jewelry, scarves, jackets, lingerie even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything to do with women's fashion will carry. So, Sue, it's April. Uh, I'm, ex I'm assuming that you are wanting, you know, beautiful summer clothes in your nice spring fashions. Yeah, right now we're looking at spring fashions to be brought in. And, uh, and then in about a month, we'll be looking for summer fashions. How it works is the consigner would bring in the items. We'd go through it. Uh, things that I think that would work for the store. Um, then I'll put it out and we tag it. And once it sells, depending on what the consigner wants, if they want cash for their clothing, then it's 60% for the store and 40 for the consigner. But if they want store credit, then it's 50-50. I would probably take store credit because I have found all kinds of great stuff in here. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people have. It's been a lot of fun. So, Sue, what's your phone number in case somebody uh, would like to call and get some information on consigning some clothes? It's uh, area code 519-506-8588. And what are your store hours? I'm open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 to 5. Great. Thanks very much for talking with us today. Thank you for coming in. Hi, it's Jenna Lavero, and I'm here at Blue Water Radio with Ted Easton and Kay Fell in the morning. It's the new morning show. Uh, could you tell me, what are you guys doing here? Uh, trying to keep ourselves relevant, really. Uh, being the number one unemployed morning show, uh, you got to keep working, even though they're not paying us. No, no, they're not paying us, but at least I'm getting out of the house, and I'm not sitting at home. But it's been a lot of fun. I love it here. I've heard once you kind of get the radio bug, it's you've got it for life. Oh, yeah. You're like polio. <laughs> like polio, measles, or anything you can get inoculated for. Radio, uh, no needle for that. But, yeah, it is it's something that gets into your blood, gets into the uh, uh, just your heart, and you just want to get that notion and that feeling to just entertain the masses. And that's what we're here for. Yeah, and it's true. You just Once you start radio, you can't stop. It's, it's always going in your mind, and you never stop thinking about it. And as you also notice, we also don't shut up. So that, that works for us, too. I don't shave. True, he doesn't. So, <laughs> what time does the morning show come on? 7 o'clock till 10 o'clock every day, Monday to Friday, right here on 91.3 Blue Water Radio. Yeah, we've, we also brought a, a new aspect to Blue Water. We're bringing local news to the morning, so when you're driving to work, you can hear what's happening in the Las Vegas of Gray County, Hanover, Walkerton, and the GVA, the Greater Varney area. Yeah, we're going to give you your bus reports, your road closures. We're just going to be that information source that you want to come to, the local information source. That's us right here. Well, Kay Fell and Ted, thank you very much for talking with us this morning and allowing us to invade your, your space here. <laughs> no, no problem. Enjoy the sunshine streaming in from the windows. And if anybody has requests 
for the show. Yeah, they can give us a call. 519-506-9130. No, wait. 9130? Yeah, you got it. All you right. got it. You can also email us at bs at bluewaterradio.ca because we are the kings of that. That's true. That's true. Great. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. It's Adam here with What's Happening in Hanover, and we're in the community hall here in the Civic Center. And I'm with Savannah Schaus, the Economic Development Coordinator for the town. Hi, Savannah. Hello, how are you? So we just uh, wanted to mention the next steps here. Tonight, they're getting the final comments for these downtown streetscape, right? Yes, that's right. This is the fourth and final session for streetscape uh, input from the public. And so in April, which the show will be airing in, uh, the plans will be final. Uh, so will people actually get a chance to see those plans if they go to Hanover's website? Absolutely. If you go to Hanover.ca, then you can click on our downtown revitalization and you'll be able to see the full plan, the whole process. We want to be able to show people if they've missed these four sessions, what it is that we went through to get here. So all of that will be available online and then the final plan to look at because we won't be constructing this year by any means. It's, it'll be at least next year. That was going to be my next question. So we're kind of thinking the spring, summer of 2016 is going to be when this plan actually gets implemented. We'll have to see. It's totally budget depending, but that's going to be up to them as well. This plan will have phased plans. It will have budgets and everything included. So we're hoping for 2016. That's the goal. So if you want to get excited, go to Hanover.ca in April and just check out some of the things they've put up for the plans. And they'll have some cool pictures I see too of, of what it looks like or what it should look like. It'll be a good read. It's not one of those documents that is pure text. This is image heavy. So definitely take a look and enjoy. Excellent. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you. I'm here with Sean Kelly from Scott Design from Fergus, and they're the uh, designers for the downtown streetscape plan. And Sean, uh, what's take me through the process so far? What have you guys come up with so far? The process really entailed uh, engaging community, bringing them in, uh, doing a quick education sis, uh, series with them, talking about what streets could be like, uh, demonstrating what they could be like, and allowing the community to 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 understand items that are found on streetscapes, um, understand their costs understand their their maintenance and operation as well and 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 working amongst themselves to 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 inform themselves as well as provide back to us their expectation on a streetscape that would be fitting for Hanover and that's the neat thing about this plan is that everything, almost everything, has an earmark dollar estimate, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you you, you, you could do linear foot costs per street, um, or you can just look at components and elements and say that's going to cost you this or that, right? Um, what was quite fun in this process was the fact that, you know, the, as the wish list grew or the naysayers spoke because of costs, they quickly realized that, you know what, maybe there's some achievable opportunities here with the street uh, for what we need in Hanover to do the things that we're expecting for Hanover uh, and what the community expects for themselves. Now, the neat thing you said about Scott Design is you guys prefer to work with the rural communities. Is that uh, just because of the dialogue you can get going between you and the community? I think so. We're, you know, we're designers, landscape architects, and planners in our firm, and uh, we we like to, to say that we specialize in rural communities, mostly in Ontario, with population bases under 15,000. Uh, but more often than not, we're looking at communities of 5,000, 1,000 people. Uh, usually highly engaged people, highly concerned people that want want to be, be involved in the processes and the decisions in their communities. Well, thank you so much for your time, Sean. Now, we're looking forward to seeing the final plans coming out, and people can see those on the website, and we'll be excited to see those, right? Yeah. Uh, we're. We're scheduled to have the project wrapped up by the end of March. Uh, so you know, we take about, take the feedback from tonight. We go back, we tweak a few things, uh, finish up a few other things, and hopefully uh, we'll have a much more comprehensive plan by the end of the end of the month. Great, thank you for your time, Sean. You're very welcome. Thank you. We're here this evening for the Hanover Chamber of Commerce 2014 Chamber Awards here at the Hanover Legion, and we're just about to get started. I'll turn it over to tonight's MC, Chamber President, Adam Ward, for the introductions. At uh, this time, we'll get into our awards for the evening. That's why majority of us are all here, to celebrate our nominees and our award winners. Hanover's 2014 Citizen of the Year Award goes to Lori Pegalo. 
Lori did a magnificent job as chairperson of the successful 2014 Hanover Homecoming. Born and raised in Hanover, Lori gets involved to contribute to our community's quality of life. Lori has been a Hanover Barons executive member for many years. Currently, their treasurer, assisting at home games and other Barons events. Lori creates the schedule for the 25 to 30 team ladies volleyball league, balancing games played, playing times and gym locations, and was the chairperson for several years. Previously, as a hockey mom, she was treasurer and served on the minor hockey board for a number of years. Hockeyville Night in Hanover 2006. Lori chaired a six-week volunteer recruitment and implementation plan for a great Hockeyville Night in Hanover, following our top 10 finish in the national contest. With community spirit prominence and proud and Hockeyville taking on a life of its own, requirements had to be met for this national contest. The last blast in the barn 2009, Lori co-chaired a weekend celebration including roller skates a day-long special event, and one last dance in our Coliseum, which held many special memories for our residents before it was taken down. Olympic Torch Event 2010. A member of the organizing committee, this special event celebrated the Olympic Torch. PH Center Grand Opening 2010. Lori co-chaired the grand opening. As a finance committee member from 08 to 10, they planned and implemented the fundraising campaign for the PH Center. Lori has served for several years on the Hanover Hospital Board. Lori's most recent effort was the role of chairperson for our 110th homecoming. She led her team of community volunteers who all played an integral part in the success of this two-year process to plan our town's biggest block party yet. Nominated by Sherry Walden and Peter Hambly. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here accepting the Citizen of the Year Award on Lori's behalf. I told Lori that Bruce and I would be happy to go to Mexico for her and Mike, but as you can see, I lost the flip. <laughs> Lori and I volunteered together for a number of years. Working alongside with Lori, together we've always been on the same page, feeding off each other's ideas. She's not just a team leader, she's a team player. She has a passion to make a difference, creating the most fun and making memories that we will treasure for a long time. Lori sent me a thank you from Mexico, which I would like to share with you. I would like to congratulate all the other award recipients tonight. The Youth Citizen of the Year, Dr. Asling, and Larry Lantz. I would like to send a heartful thanks to my family for their love and support, encouragement, advice, and help when I'm volunteering. Thank you to Peter Hambly and Sherry Walden for their nominations. They both have always provided support and encouragement. Thank you to the Chamber for honoring me for this award. It means so much, <coughs> it means so much to me to receive this recognition. When Adam called to let me know I was nominated and was chosen Citizen of the Year, he left a message saying he was wearing his Chamber hat. I was trying to think of what he, made need, what he may be needing volunteers for. It was a huge surprise to hear the reason why he called. It is such an honor to be recognized for volunteering in my community. To me, volunteering is a lot of fun and I get to meet lots of great people. Volunteering has brought me so many rewards, including the one tonight. It allows me to meet, become friends, share awesome memories with people I may not otherwise have had the opportunity had we not volunteered together. Once again, a big thank you to Peter, Sherry, and the Chamber for this honor. In closing, to my friend, thank you once again for your generosity, your spirit you have, your care, dedication, and compassion. Thank you for volunteering. Hanover's 2014 Lifetime Achievement for Community Service Award goes to Dr. Jerry Asling. Born in Uxbridge, Dr. Asling started his dental practice in Hanover in 1966. Although he had a busy career and family, married to his wife Joan for 50 years and had three daughters, he made time to give back to the community. In 1986, Dr. Asling was recognized as Citizen of the Year and continued to do even more volunteer work. Here are a few examples. In the 70s, Jerry made trips to Honduras, Belize, and Burundi to do dental work. He's been a board director for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Hanover for 35 years. Jerry has been chair and on the board of directors for Grace United Church, an active member of the Outreach Committee. He traveled to India and Bangladesh in 2007 with Canadian Food Grain Banks. 
Jerry has been a letter writer for more than 40 years with Amnesty International, the organization aimed to free people wrongly imprisoned. He is a 25-year member currently serving as president with the Saugeen Fields Naturalists, which monitors more than 440 bluebird boxes. Jerry is a steward with the Kinghurst Forest, keeping trails in order for more than five years. Jerry played an instrumental role in the establishment of the DAC Youth Center and has been on this board since its inception. He opened his home for six weeks to a child from Chernobyl to assist in recovery from the 1986 radiation exposure. I believe Jerry is a most worthy nominee. Having served with him on the Big Brothers Big Sisters board, he's always very generous with his time and concerned about the best interests of the people served by this agency. His long-term commitment to our community and the international community is exceptional. He cares deeply and has improved the lives of many. This nomination was submitted by Selwyn Hicks, friend and co-board member of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this honor. Uh, I think when Adam called me, there was a long pause there <laughs> trying to digest the news because it certainly was a shock. Um, I need to, I guess, uh, do a lot of thank yous. Uh, first of all, to my parents who, who brought me up to be a volunteer and because of their, the way they were in their community. My father has passed away, but my mother will be 99 in, in a week or so. Um, I might be around a long time. <laughs> you may get sick of me. Um, and so I, uh, I had a, a, good, a good role models to start with. And I, I came to Hanover said, in 66. I um, was on a government bursary. I came for two years to fulfill that government bursary in 1966, and I'm still here <laughs> 48 years later. Uh, it's a great town, and we've certainly enjoyed being here, Joan and I. Um, and I have certainly enjoyed um, all the groups I've, I've, I've worked with. Um, the one that wasn't mentioned was when the first one I got involved with was the Boy Scouts. I was a scout leader for a number of years as well, with my good friend Bob Bell over here. Um, and uh, then I got into Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and it was, uh, again, um, a, good, a great group. It's a great organization, great group of people. And uh, Saugeen Field Natural, same thing, good, good people to work with. And that's been, uh, and then my Grace United Church, who are a good many of my friends over here, uh, sitting with me are from Grace United Church. So it hasn't been, a, it hasn't been a difficult at all. It's been, it's been wonderful serving with these people. And that is what, I guess, as so many people have already said, uh, what makes this town great and why I'm still here, I guess, because it is a wonderful town and why I guess we picked it in the first place because we had probably 20 towns we could have gone to um, with this government bursary and, and Hanover is the one we chose. Um, I have no regrets. And uh, it's always been, in the years I've um, been working with youth, been very supportive of not only Big Brothers Big Sisters but also the DEC. Um, a great support from this town. <clears throat> so I'd like to thank, of course, the town and, and, and the people I've, that I've worked with. It, it certainly makes being a volunteer much easier, much more enjoyable uh, uh, to do that. Um, I thank my wife, Joan, sitting over here um, for her support over the years. Um, she's been a member of the Saugeen Field Natures as well. Um, uh, well, we had the girl from Chernobyl, and that was a wonderful experience. Um, and she does her own. Uh, volunteering as well, driving for Cancer Society. So we, um, we keep ourselves busy, and, uh, and my two sisters are, have come up from Uxbridge, Pat over here and uh, Faye on this side. And uh, of course, they've been supportive of all the things. And they do a whole lot of stuff in their own town areas too. So um, that's the way we were raised. And so it's been great. Um, I've enjoyed uh, being here, and I'm, I expect I'll be here a few more years as well. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful honor. Hanover's 2014 Business Citizen of the Year Award goes to Hanover Honda, Larry Lons. Hanover Honda was purchased by Larry Lons in November of 2007. There were nine employees at the time, with the company growing to the current number of 17. Hanover Honda is committed to giving back to the community, including sponsoring the Hanover Honda Arena, which was the biggest sponsorship of the center. Hanover Honda also generously supports many regional charities. They sponsor the annual Writers' Workshop at the Hanover Library, 
They supported several charity golf tournaments in the region, including a $5,000 hole-in-one prize, which was won at the 2014 Chamber of Commerce tournament this past September. That fortunate winner is here tonight. They also sponsor Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Bruce Gray Film Society, and local minor sports teams, including the Hanover Barons. Hanover Honda also supports several large and small health-related charities in the region. The list of community organizations and charities supported by Hanover Honda is long and varied. Larry Launce is the past president of the Hanover Lions Club and has served on Hanover's Community Improvement Partnership Committee. Larry and Hanover Honda are examples of the community and good corporate citizenship and best practices in business and are very deserving of the honor of Business Citizen of the Year. Nominated by Norma Graham. Thank you very much. And just to clarify, I was never past president of the Lions, okay? So I'm not going to be as long-winded as Lori was. <laughs> when I first heard I was getting this award, my first question to Adam was, which one of my family nominated me? But uh, as everyone knows, it's not my award. Um, it also belongs to my, my family. Sorry emotional. My family that supports me, my excellent staff, which is some of them are sitting at the table there, and uh, our awesome customers. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Your 2014 Youth Citizen is Sierra Scott. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, um, but I'd like to say thank you to a few people. Um, first, I'm going to say thank you to Ashton, Selena, Katrina, Arthur, and the rest of my impact group because I wouldn't be getting this award if it wasn't for their help and encouragement through the past year. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Brittany because she's helped so much and always encouraged our ideas. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to Miss Fisher because she's the one that um, connected me with Brittany and got me involved and pushed me and really made me believe that I could do this. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to my parents because even though I might not have always made the best decisions, they've always been very supportive and been there to help me. So thank you guys. I'm very honored to have been nominated and gotten this award. Hi, this is Jennifer Olivero, and I'm here with Brittany and Sierra. Sierra, can you tell us where we're standing right now? Um, we're standing in the future home of our Youth Activity and Technology Center. Who is going to be able to come here? Um, youth from ages 12 to 18. And what's going on here? Like, what could they do while they're here? Um, we're going to have a Mac lab. We're going to have a kitchen and a stage and TVs. That's Brittany, what is your role uh, in relation to the Youth Activity and Technology Center? As the Youth Roots Coordinator, I've been working in the community and in the school to build relationships with the youth. So I'm providing that bridge from the school to the center so that youth will, can come here and feel comfortable because they see a friendly face that they already know. So this is going to be a safe place for youth to gather. They can have fun. Um, and what else is going to be involved? Are any uh, businesses getting involved with this? Yes, we have a lot of support in the community from our local businesses. So I know that Jacinda, the project manager of the Youth Activity and Technology Center, she is out seeking those um, partnerships and sponsorships and help from our local business owners. Great, thank you. I'm here with Jacinda Rudolph. And what is your role in relation to the Youth Activity and Technology Center? So I was hired as the project manager for the Youth Activity and Technology Center. Um, my role is to be able to get community support and financial support to make this center run for a very long time. Um, I want to create some partnerships. I've been working already with Youth Roots very closely to see what the youth want at the center and what kind of activities and programs that they're interested in. And then I'm going to make that connection through the community here and in the region um, to see how we can make this partnership work and to see how we can get these programs implemented so that we have those connections from the youth to their community. If a business is interested in a partnership with the center, how would they go about um, implementing that? Uh, first, they'd connect with me 
and then I would see if it fits uh, well with what the youth are looking for and then um, I would kind of be the behind the scenes so if let's say it's a business if it's if it's an apprenticeship program um, that opportunity would be, would be great and what we would do is we would get um, the business to together with the youth to see what programs we can implement. Are apprenticeship programs um, something that our youth are looking for? Yes, the youth are very interested in apprenticeship programs. They're interested in learning skills that will help them to be able to get a job uh, later on once they're done their schooling, whether they go away to school and come back or if they decide to go from school right into uh, the workforce. So Jacinda, I'm standing next to a pile of drywall. There are exposed beams, there's insulation going up. What's going on? Uh, well, on March 11th, we got the uh, construction going. So we have uh, Zettel Construction, Wayne's Electric, and M. Key Shop. Um, they're doing the work here to get this center up and running. Um, they've been fantastic. They've been working very quickly to get this open so that we can open by May. So they've gone fast since May, uh, March 11th. What is this space destined to become? So this is going to be the Mac Lab. Uh, we'll have eight Mac computers here with um, a number of different software programs for the uh, students, youth, to be able to learn some different skills when it comes to, let's say, graphic design or um, uh, gaming development. So what is the former showroom going to become? So this space is an open space. There is going to be uh, computers here for the youth to use. We also want to have kind of an activity space, so there might be um, easels for some art projects or some art programming going on. There'll be a large uh, projection screen here for, uh, for classes. Um, we might have some kind of sitting area for them to relax. They all, the youth have to be able to feel comfortable here and they have to be able to want to come here. So first it's going to be about relationship building. It's going to be about letting them know that this is a safe space for them. So we need to create that space. So what are these two spaces behind us going to be? Uh, so one of them is going to be my office and also used for meeting uh, space as well. And then the other one here behind me is going, is going to be um, kind of a, a meeting space, a one-on-one -on -one room, um, a space where people can come in and have interviews or meetings. And uh, I just wanted you to notice that this whole center uh, will be fully accessible. So we have uh, wide doors in both the rooms and also there'll be a um, fully accessible uh, entryway. And the washrooms as well. And the washrooms is a fully accessible uh, washroom for adults. That's great to see. So Jacinda, we've now come into the garage portion of the former dealership. Um, what's going on here? So this is going to be kind of a multi-purpose room, but the destiny for this space is really, really going to depend on funding. Funding from our business partners in the community. So Jacinda, what is the projected date for the center to be opened? Uh, we're hoping to open by sometime in May, middle of May. Uh, this space won't be open for a little while after that, again, depending on funding. From our awesome community partners that we are hoping are going to reach out and, 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 and realize how great yeah. an initiative this is going to be and support it. Donations are welcome from community partners as well, the preferred. Yes, donations as well as uh, volunteers. So we really want some volunteers to be active members in this initiative. Uh, could volunteers be mentors for programs? Absolutely. We need mentors for, this, for these programs. We need uh, people who have skills that want to pass on their skills. It's, it's going to be great. Great. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today, Jacinda. Thank you. It's Jenna Lavero again, and this time I'm talking with Savannah Schaus. So what is your role in relation to all of this awesomeness going on? Oh, my role is uh, economic development and communication. So making sure that the world knows about what we are doing here in Hanover, putting youth on the map for once. And we were just speaking with Jacinda, and I understand that she is new to the town of Hanover. She is. I think this might be day 13 or 14, so we have thrown her in, um, but we are two and a half years in this process, so it has been a long time going. Now that we have Jacinda, things are going to start to move very quickly, so look for her everywhere. Uh, she will be knocking on doors, she will be talking to businesses, talking to youth roots a lot, making sure that we have the youth input. We couldn't do this without them, so she is here, there, and everywhere. Great, thank you very much.
Thanks for joining us for What's Happening in Hanover. The weather is getting warmer and we're sure to have some outdoor events soon. So if you have an event or an idea or a business you'd like featured, go to community at whiteman.ca and send us an email or call us at 519-506-9502. And we'd be happy to get your show or event on the air and talk about it. So for Adam and Jen Olivero, this is What's Happening in Hanover. Thank you for listening and watching What's Happening in Hanover. Brought to you by the Town of Hanover, Hanover Chamber of Commerce, 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio, and Whiteman TV. What's Happening in Hanover is heard on 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio at 6 p.m. Wednesdays and showing daily on Whiteman TV, Channel 6.